you will use postulates uh, involving points, lines, and uh, planes in this section. Postulates are rules accepted as being true without proof. Theorems, rules that can be proved. Theorems can be proven using postulates or axioms and definitions. Some of the postulates that you have seen so far are uh, the segment addition postulate. So if you have a segment a B and there's a point M which is collinear with the other two, then you can state that AB equals AM plus MB. In the angle addition postulate, uh, similarly, if you have, and I'm going to uh, draw that over to the side just for room. So if you have an angle okay, two sides of the angle and I'm just using segments which is AOK -okay, common ray in here Let's label the angle. So if this point is A, B, C, D, let's make these rays now, then angle addition postulate allows us to say that the measure of angle ABC equals the measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle D, B, C. So that's just a little review on segment addition postulate and angle addition postulate. And now there are other postulates here uh, about points, lines, and planes. So let's look at the first one. And we we'll label them. So if you're given two points, A and B, the points in red, then, then there exists one and only one line through them. So given any two points, you can construct a line with two points. A line contains at least two points. A line will actually contain an infinite number of points, but it's going to, to define it, it needs at least two points. I can call these x, y, and it can in reality though there are tons of points on a line. Number three, if two lines intersect, they ex intersect at exactly one point. This is the point of intersection. Let's call this P. And just a reminder, angles that sit across from each other are called vertical angles. They are congruent. Angles that are adjacent to each other on a straight line are called linear pairs and they add up to 180. If you have three non-collinear points, there exists exactly one plane. So if I have these three non-collinear points, now even though when we draw a plane it has boundaries. In reality, a plane does not have boundaries. We know that three points are non-collinear if they form a triangle. A plane contains at least three non-collinear points. If you had only two points, then they could only define a line. So you need at least three points to define a plane. This is obvious. The next one that if two points lie in a plane, so let's look at the diagram above. Let's call these points R and S. If the two points are in line in, lie in a plane, then the line containing them also lies in the same plane. So there we go. Uh, if two planes intersect and their intersection is a line. So if, uh, 
I have a way to draw planes which is um, may help some of you draw one plane and then you know that planes intersect in a line of intersection so you could draw the line of intersection first so let's do that over here let's say this is my line of intersection and then all you do is you draw another plane around it and this one I'm going to hand sketch so anything that you can't see is dashed and you just construct another rectangle or another parallelogram around this part I can see now that's not the best drawing in the world but you see that it shows two planes intersecting uh, if two planes intersect then the intersection is a line you can use the same sketch as in number six the difference between number six and uh, number two, uh, number seven, is in what is in the given or whatever is in the hy hypothesis. Next, a line is perpendicular to a plane if and only if we've spoken about biconditionals. If and only if the line intersects the plane in a point and is perpendicular to every line in the plane that intersects it at that point. So here's what you could do is take a piece of paper, um, take a sharp pencil or a straw, poke a hole in it and wherever that hole is, um, on that piece of paper draw lines, as, as many lines as you would like as long as they touch the straw or they go through the straw and you will see that all those lines will be perpendicular uh, to the line that goes through the plane. Our brains are taught to make sense of information we are given that's given to us and it's the same as uh, it's the same when we are given diagrams so if you look at the diagram on the right you might be tempted to state that angle A is a right angle. In geometry we do not assume anything unless we are told specifically either by symbols or by words. So the symbol here could be this. Now once I've mark that or once it's marked on the diagram you can see angle A is is a right angle or it could be given to you so I could say given angle A is a right angle let's just take the example now of a diagram that you're given and how you can come up with a postulate that describes the diagram or that is illustrated by the diagram. So let's do this. Uh, let's have two intersecting lines okay and then we have another diagram Okay, the difference between the first and the second diagrams is that you see a point in the second one. Let's insert the words if here and then here. 
So what postulate uh, could you uh, come up with that illustrates this diagram? Well, what we see in the first diagram here is if two lines intersect, then the, their intersection is a point and it could be any point but we'll just label it P here.